Salutations, everybody. It's your man, Wasted Talent, coming to you with another video of my Make or Break series. And I think this particular player is the most polarizing player on the roster. And he's also the most important player on our roster for the upcoming season. And that player is Alex Leatherwood. Now, Alex Leatherwood was a, a, a guy who many have thought was a reach at the 17th pick. Uh, he was the 43rd ranked prospect. So, you know, everyone had him ranked probably like a, a high early second round pick. He had a, a prospect grade of 6.28 from NFL from the NFL and NFL.com. Uh, Pro Football Focus also had him at an 85 run block grade. Uh, a 73.4 pass block grade. He also had some some lower numbers too. You know, his zone blocking grade was about 87.1. His gap grade was 81.5. And his true pass set grade was like 67. So that's not ideally what you want for a guy that you have projected to be on your starting offensive line. Last year, you know, he was done no favors. And I've said this several times on a few of my lives. Alex Leatherwood had to go up against a who's who at, you know, pass rush at right tackle last early last season. You know, he started off and, you know, against the Baltimore Ravens. He had to go up against Emmanuel Agba, Joey Bosa and TJ Watt. And then he was unceremoniously demoted and put at guard because of Denzel Good is what they've said. But to be honest with you. You know, I think that they thought Alex Leatherwood was a guy who they had slighted to be a guard and or a tackle when they drafted him. They kind of overreached for Alex Leatherwood. And that was kind of the scouting report on Alex Leatherwood. I mean, his scouting report, you know, everyone said that he had solid athleticism. He has some projectable traits at tackle. Um, and, you know, he had some weaknesses. And we're going to get into some of those weaknesses. Uh, mechanical weaknesses. Uh, he's athletic, but he lacks twitch in his quarters. Uh, he needed to improve his play strength and his power at contact. He also has an issue with hand placement and his 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 first hand, like his jab. He's not the kind of guy who pushes guys back and dominates them. He's kind of a guy who kind of keeps a bubble in front of him. Uh, he would benefit with attacking rushers early, and also you know Alex Leatherwood needs to kind of get more power. Now, what I've seen in this offseason from Alex Leatherwood is, is him get extremely more powerful. He looks like he's in great shape. He looks like he's ready for the upcoming season. And, you know, with that play strength and the muscle that he's put on, it kind of looks like he's the guy who's going to be able to punish people and finish blocks. Now, the reason why Alex Leatherwood is so important for the Raiders is, is if you have a starting right tackle who is in the middle of the pack, then that means that with us having Colton Miller at left tackle and us having Andre James at center and us having a Denzel Good and or Jermaine Illuminor at guard, drafting Dylan Parham and John Simpson, that means that if we have a guy that we can X off and have as a starter at right tackle and keep Derek Carr clean, then that means that we're going to have a high-powered offense. Because at our skill positions, we have guys that are solidified and bona fide at their positions, i.e. Hunter Renfro, i.e. Devontae Adams, i.e. Darren Waller, you know, and Josh Jacobs. We we have a who's who in the offensive skill position plays. The only thing that could really derail this offense this year is not keeping Derek Carr clean because we know Derek Carr getting hit takes him from being a top 10 quarterback to kind of a bottom third quarterback when he gets hit too much. So that is one of the most important pieces to this season, our offense. We know that our defense aren't going to be world beaters, even though we have Max Crosby and <laughs> Chandler Jones right there on our line. We know that we're kind of slighted to be a middle of the road defense, but if we have a middle of the road defense and a high powered offense, I think the Raiders are slighted to go very, very deep in the playoffs. And Alex Leatherwood is probably the most important piece to that school of thought. Now, what I see in Alex Leatherwood as far as his hand placement, Alex Leatherwood has been working with trainers. He's gotten physically stronger. It looks like he's more agile. I think him being in a power scheme is going to translate. But one thing 
that people are not thinking about, and this is the reason why you come to waste it for your knowledge. Max Crosby and Chandler Jones are going to be going at this guy every day in practice. And I'm sure that Chandler Jones, being the kind of technician and professional that he is, is going to be able to impart some wisdom on this young fella. And I think that we are due to get a better Alex Leatherwood. Now, if Alex Leatherwood does not improve, we have some fail safes in there. I mean, they didn't draft Bam Olaseni and Thayer Mumford and keep Brandon Parker around for no reason. And he's going to have to earn this job, and that's a great thing. And Carmen Basillo and the offensive line coaches, if they give him this job, we know Alex Leatherwood is ready for the challenge. We have some of the best coaches in football, and I, and I think that Alex Leatherwood should win this job, and I think that he is going to be a vital piece of the Raider Equinox, and he's the guy that I have slated as our most important make-or-break player. So guys, listen, if you like what you see on this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We're live 7 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. Pacific, Raider Nation Unlimited. And uh, hey, we'll catch you on the next video, man. Thanks, guys.